engineering project from the generation to the operation of a plant or machine is generally composed of the following four main phases planning and configuring, implementation and module test, testing and commissioning, operation and maintenance. The commissioning staff receives the plant software from the project planner or the programmer and must commission the plant safely, efficiently and in due time. The SIMATIC software gives you optimum support in the testing and commissioning phase with practical testing tools and diagnostics functions. We show you the commissioning process for a plant component as an example and introduce you to the SIMATIC manager functions. The commissioning process can be divided into several activity phases in which various testing and commissioning functions are used. During the visual hardware check, completeness and installation of the automation devices are checked and subsequently switched on. The display elements on the modules give you the initial diagnostic information. While commissioning the hardware of the automation devices, it is mainly the parameters and wiring of the modules that are tested using the editor of hardware configuration. In the software commissioning phase, the functions of the user program are tested with the support of the SIMATIC manager. In the following, we give you some examples of how to make integration testing and commissioning simple and efficient using the convenient tools. The core area of hardware commissioning is the provision of the automation components with the correct parameters. Furthermore, this phase comprises wiring and signal testing of the process I.O. Normally, the hardware configuration is already generated by the programmer in the implementation phase. However, it can also be corrected or supplemented online during commissioning. Our first commissioning task involves establishing a connection to these two automation devices. The programming device is connected at the Profibus and the Profibus station addresses of the automation devices have been set according to the plant configuration. After switching on the supply voltage, the LEDs at the front of the CPU indicate the operating mode. The power is on and the CPU is in stop mode. The Accessible Nodes function of the SIMATIC Manager shows us all the modules accessible at the bus system and their addresses. This gives you a quick overview of which bus stations are already accessible with the programming device. This allows you to easily trace a faulty station configuration and correct it. For loading the given hardware parameters and configurations into the CPU, we open our project in the SIMATIC Manager, select the station and open the configuration by clicking the Hardware icon. The editor of the Hardware Configuration shows the rack with the modules in the upper window and the detailed information of the modules used in the lower window. Here you can, if necessary, make changes to the parameters or the configuration via the integrated hardware catalogue, such as exchanging or adding modules. The transmission of the configuration data from the programming device to the CPU is triggered with the Download to Module button. After switching on, during the startup, the CPU compares the configured setpoint configuration with the actual configuration. In our example, the CPU is programmed to immediately change to stop mode if there is any deviation. In this case, it is a definite indicator that the actual hardware setup differs from that specified by the project planner. With its detailed diagnostics options, the SIMATIC Manager shows a quick overview of the causes of the CPU stop and subsequently offers you a detailed error analysis.
In the window for diagnostic interrupts, you see that the stop cause is a configuration error of channels 0 and 1. From our configuration documents, we know that the connected sensor supplies a current value of 4 to 20 milliamperes. For channels 0 and 1, the measured range plus minus 10 volts is the wrong default setting. In the offline project, we correct the measured range, save and compile the change configuration. Subsequently, we retransfer the configuration and start the CPU. The CPU remains in run mode and there is no longer a diagnostic interrupt. The mechanism for loading and testing the hardware configuration is the same for all automation devices and therefore also applies to the Simatic S7400 of our example. In this early phase of commissioning, the Simatic manager supports you in assuring a correct hardware configuration. The now customized configuration data provides us with the correct module rack setup in the editor. For commissioning the user program later on, it is absolutely necessary that the signal path, for example from the encoder to the CPU, corresponds to the wiring plans. Wiring and signal testing for the process I.O. is performed now, unless already done during installation of the machine or plant. The hardware configuration editor provides you with the easily operable signal test function which you can also use without user program. Thousands of signals, as occurring in complex plants, can be checked quickly and reliably. We select the digital module and open the dialog for the input signals of the module via the menu item PLC Monitor Modify. We select the monitoring mode and can now monitor the switching operation in the plant directly from the programming device. This enables you to check the signal path, for example from a mechanical end position switch over the module up to the process image input and output table of the CPU. In the same manner, we can also follow the signal path at the outputs. Before directly controlling the outputs, please ensure that as a result, dangerous states cannot occur in the plant. We insert the value true into the modify value of the output operand. By pressing the modify value button, we set the output and control, for example, a relay of the plant. After terminating signal testing, you have a verified hardware with tested I.O. signals. The requirements for commissioning the user program are now fulfilled. The next step is software commissioning, which starts with loading the user program into the controller. This requires the programming device to be online and the CPU to be in stop mode. We open the offline project, which is located on the hard disk of the programming device, and select the station as well as the block container. The block container contains all runnable blocks of the user program. Pressing the Download to Target System button, we now transmit all blocks into the user memory of the CPU. If, for example, during later commissioning phases, only a selection of blocks are to be loaded into the CPU, the Sematic Manager gives you the opportunity of viewing the blocks on the programming device in the offline window, and the blocks in the CPU memory in the online window. With drag and drop, you drag the desired blocks from the offline window to the online window of the CPU and perform the selective load procedure. To continue commissioning the software, please ensure that no dangerous machine or plant states can occur and switch the CPU to run mode. Select the dialog for the operating mode via the target system menu and start the CPU via mouse click. If the current operating mode changes to run, you can then start testing the functions. If the CPU remains in stop mode, the diagnostic buffer gives you specific information on the cause of the error.
The diagnostic buffer provides one of the most important aids to system diagnostics. It can be used for reliably diagnosing and localizing errors in the program, and also the hardware during the commissioning phase as well as later plant operation. The diagnostic buffer is located in the system memory of the CPU and can be read any time with the SIMATIC manager. In the diagnostic buffer, which is designed as a ring buffer, all important events are saved, for instance, module failures, operating mode transitions of the CPU, or, for example, errors in the user program leading to stop mode. If during commissioning the CPU changes to stop mode, the cause of this will be given to you in the diagnostic buffer, which you access in the SIMATIC manager via the module information of the CPU. In the displayed information status window of the CPU, you select the Diagnostic Buffer tab. The stop message is given at the top of the event list. Below, you see the message with the error that caused the stop. In the lower window, the SIMATIC Manager gives you further information on the error search as plain text. In our case, the Diagnostics entry shows you the failure of the Profibus station number 3. The cause of the stop is removed by switching on the Profibus station and restarting the CPU. If, as in our next example, the error is caused by the user program, for example, access to a non-existing module address, then you can jump directly to the faulty block. The diagnostic buffer thus enables you to directly and effectively find the error and to remove it. The stop cause of the faulty I.O. access is in our example directly removed in the block online, so that after restart the CPU is now in run mode and runs without errors. The successfully corrected block should finally be transmitted from the CPU to the offline project.